the nerves are, are high, the adrenaline's pumping. You're thinking, oh God, can I do this? Am I going to make it through? Have I done the right training? Have I eaten enough? Have I done all those things? You, you just want to go and you can't wait to be on the starting line at 5 a.m. It's like uh, before a boxing game, everybody look at each other, lots of pressure, you know, the, you, you put 10 months in terms of preparation, thinking about it. It's incredibly exciting. You're thinking, OK, you have 250 kilometres to get through by the end of the next day. You have so many different components, so you have your running, your cycling, your climbing and the kayaking. There's a little bit of moment where you go off into the start of the race and you just accept that you're going to be hurting for a long time. But as soon as the countdown starts, it just comes, comes around way too quick. And before you know it, you're into the darkness. When you get to the start of the half marathon, you know, you just have to run the, the 21k. Anything more than that would seem a lot, but when you're already mentally prepared for 250, it doesn't seem very much. The shorter distance, like it's 50, 60k, uh, you can give it all. The race is different if you are racing it from the start. The race could be you. You need to have a plan for every every stage in terms of uh, what you will put inside the transition box. Um, that's quite key in, in terms of food, but also closing. Oh, Jesus. There goes 250 euros. Pack, repack, and pack several more times again just to make sure and go through it in your head over and over. If you get to the transition and you're missing something in your bag, that's the end of it. Once you get on the kayak, you're gathering your thoughts together. You're maybe a little bit stiff, you're maybe a little bit achy, but once you get into your rhythm, it just makes it so nice. It makes it much, much easier. Good technique on the kayak section is quite important. and um, It'll save a lot of energy. Um, it's about 10 kilometres if you make it there in good time, so you're kind of always conscious of you know, you want to be there before the tide turns. Go left and go straight up to the turn right. Right. You can see the mountain. Yeah, best of luck. The first bike is one of the toughest you'll get in, in the country. It takes in some of the hardest climbs. You know, straight away you're climbing up Nokala and then you've got exposed roads around Fannet Head and Atlantic Drive, and then the real horrible climb up La Salt. It's, um, you know, if you get a headwind up there, it, it just brings you to a halt. That's torture, absolutely torture. When you're, you know, a good maybe four or five hours into that cycle and you hit that, you know, you're looking across, you can see muckish from, from that point, but you have a long way to go before you get there. That's energy zapping. I, th I thought I liked climbs until I went there and, jeez, they kill you. They're like walls. <laughs> you, as soon as you think you're in a rhythm, they throw another hill at you. There's a lot of races out there that are of the same distance or more. It's the hills, it's the terrain. It, they just beat you over the head constantly. Ah, oh, good, yeah. Suffered there for half an hour. Really, really hard half an hour. Sort of puking and stuff, so coming good again, I think. So, get up this mountain now. Muckish is tough going. It's, um, yeah, quite boggy to start with, and like that, you can't really get into a rhythm. Uh, the terrain's constantly changing, 
Uh, so very boggy to start with and then it gets steep and then it levels out again and then it really kicks up to the top, up to the rocky surface. Okay, so a bit slippy now here for the next wee while. Okay. That's the leg burner, you know, you're after doing over half marathon run, 100k bike, the kayak, and then kills you all the while trying to save something in the legs for what I said. I think muckish comes at a time when you're looking to get off the bike, you know, and each each section kind of you're looking towards the next section. Um, so you you'd be glad to see muckish by the time you're finished with the bike, and then you're you're actually happy to get back on the bike again when you have muckish behind you. So yeah, it's just it's it's a psychological battle the whole day. The big thing about the race is your head. Your fitness will eventually run down a bit, but your head will get you out. There is two person inside you, there is one saying, yeah, it's great, you will do it. But the reason, the other, the other person inside you will tell you, well, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. That's your, 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 your black moments during the race where you think, I'm not going to finish this, I'm not going to finish this. Forget about it, we'll start again next year with more training. We all like to think we're very strong people. Until something like that is thrown in front of you. When you feel like you're not in control, it, it, it is a fear that you're not going to make it to the end. You have to have little targets to, to get through. You know, you're going to make it to this lamppost or you're going <laughs> to make it to that, you know, to that, um, yeah, to the next field and you're just thinking, yeah, if I get there, I can get a little bit further. You just have to think about, you know, I've done that, that's fantastic. I've only got two parts to do or one part to do. This is my next challenge within my challenge. I'm going to make it. You know, you're trying to focus for 13, 14, 15 hours, and um, you know, it's there's no downtime as such, especially if you're in a race. You know, it's important not to let the head drop. You've got to stay mentally strong. The first year, I think uh, physically, I was gone, no more energy. But it's funny, your your your, your brain said, no, you you still have. 20 miles, 10 miles to do, and, and you will do it. So the, 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 at that time, the brain pushed you to finish it. And this year, the brain said, no, the brain stopped me. Uh, from the start, almost after 5K, I started to have hard legs. It's difficult to believe. I could have understood that after 150 or 200, everybody would really feel some pain. But after 5 or 10K, that's really too early in the race. After 120K, I have to, to stop. Both legs were cramping, quad and calf, so no way I could have finished that. So yeah. Two or three hours after, no more cramp, no more pain. It was all gone. Um, so that was, for me, it's really difficult to explain. I, I came up too, too stressed, I suppose. At that stage of the race, a lot of people are, they can see the finish line and mentally they start to switch off because they think they're nearly there, which is a dangerous place to be um, because, you know, you still have 40 odd K to go and a hard 40 K at that. Your body's going to be tired, there's a lot of lactic acid built up. The quicker you can get going again, the better. So you need to just take fuel, get changed very quick and get out. Right. See you later. Thank you so much. I'll see you at the end. You are exhausted and you just want to go home, but it's a long way around. I think that's what you have to remember. It's not an easy route for a marathon distance. I mean, it really is a difficult route. It was a hike, a 42k, a horrendous hike. It did get to a stage where I just, I couldn't, I couldn't run anymore. I'd, I'd take off and five steps later, I'd realize I was walking again.
for most people it's dark at that stage and that's kind of where the the demons as such start to come in uh, you know they're tired and fatigued they're going for maybe 17 18 hours at that stage because it's so dark, you really don't have an idea of distance. I think sometimes you thought, I'm nearly there, but I, I don't know, you're maybe halfway, if you even are halfway at that stage. So it's about really getting the mental strength at that stage to get up through Glen Bay. You see the lights and you can hear the crowd over the other side of the lake and you have to go way, way away from them. I think, I think they do that on purpose, just to try and break you. Okay. Be glad to be finished. Oh, God. Coming towards the end, every muscle fibre in your body is screaming. You just want to stop. At that point, when you're through the marathon, you already have what over well over 200 kilometres done. You're counting down the Ks at this stage, so you just know, OK, if I get this 10K over and done with, there's only another one to go, you know? So there's a sense of you just need to get to the end. You have to you have to just keep on going no matter what. You'll, you know, if I had to crawl over the finish, I would. amazing when you actually cross the line you know you've done all that thing you've put your body through all of this but the moment you cross the line and then you just think that's it enough I'm going no further it was the most amazing thing I've ever done I have to say challenge it was just fantastic and the human body is an amazing piece of equipment from first right to last it's you know, it's a hell of an achievement what whatever time you finish in you see people's elation when they cross the line it's Great, you know, and having family members and stuff there to greet you, it's, it's wonderful. You don't even take it in, you don't even look at the medal when you, when, you know, you cross the finishing line, you just think, oh, I'm here, you know, I'm here. You know, I look at things like the race as a wonderful challenge, just to know, just for myself to still feel alive. It's good to, to make the most out of, out of what you, you can physically and mentally achieve because the, the, the race is both. I love challenge, I always try to, to stay motivated, having something big to do and just to keep it, keep you going. 17 was supposed to be my last year, uh, so looking for 18 and uh, that would be the, maybe the best way to close the book. And I should be done with the race after that. And you chase these things to try and find your breaking point, but you hope that you never find it. That's what Donegal is, is anyone who wants to, to try and find their breaking point, that'll, that'll help you get close to it or find it.